All right, Giro d'Italia stage five, very exciting. Mikel Lander crashed, we're gonna talk about that in a minute. Very, very sad, the man's out the race. I thought he was a huge favorite. I really thought he could win, so really upset about that. Uh, and then we're gonna talk about Caleb Ewan, how he won this sprint, because my oh my, it was a mad, mad, mad sprint. So we're gonna get right into it. So I've got some screenshots up, can't use footage for obvious reasons. Uh, so this is about 400, 500 meters to go. We've got Tim Merlier's lead out man on the front. Then we've got the, the old classic Milano, who hasn't done a good job so far, crashed into his own teammate earlier on, get the laser pointer out. Uh, Viviani's lead out man, he's got Consoni, Viviani, and then Caleb Ewan's in this red helmet where my laser pointer is. That's uh, Gaviria, that is Merlier in the Malia Ciclamino. And the final bloke we're gonna look for is Nizzolo, who's had 11 second places before today, and including today, 12. So, you know, wins. Anyway, start, next slide is about 200 meters to go, can't see it. Nizzolo decides to launch, completely wrong side of the road, the road's going to the left. Ewan tucked in just behind here, um, in the black, obviously, and then Consoni is just leading out um, Viviani, and Viviani was coming past with Consoni so, like, they were going so quick. But if we look at the overhead shot here, Merlier tries to get on the wheel. Caleb Ewan managed to basically bash him off, but you can see this is the 200 meter to go banner, and he's already launched Nizzola so early, so early, because Viviani's still on the wheel, just about to launch, and Caleb Ewan's sitting there just being like, oi, this is outrageous. So we're gonna to go to the next slide, and you can see he's managed to bump around here. He's got basically a sprinter's gap behind him. Like, he's got a good gap. Nizzolo's launched. Caleb Ewan's still in the draft, just loving life. We're gonna go a little bit further on. Now Viviani's launched at 150 meters go. So he's already been going for 50 meters, uh, and he's just had to cut. So he started here and had to go all the way across the screen uh, to get the shortest line. So he's had to go quite a long way, and Caleb Ewan's just sitting in. And then again, it's all is now basically trying to box everyone off on the inside, which is fine. But Ewan now has the perfect situation. He knows if he goes down the right, he might get it. Bit risky. He knows he's got gas and just absolutely whacks it on the left of him. So you can see here his front wheels going across uh, behind Nizzolo. And then there, three of them are just sprinting across a lot stronger than everyone else. Sagan, Gaviria, everyone else way behind. And it's pretty obvious at this point, it's gonna be from one of those three. Viviani doesn't have the gas, so it's Nizzola versus Caleb Ewan. Here, Ewan comes next to him. He's not even that arrow. He used to, you know, literally sit on the top tube. Now there's no sitting on the top tube. It's just full gas, uh, and he sprints a lot better. And he won the stage pretty, pretty convincingly in the end. The speed he came past, Nizzola was pretty large. And it's just a tough day out for Jack Moore Nizzola because, I mean, if we go back to the original starting position, He's just dropped off on the wrong place here. Like, he's dropped off here, and he decides to go right. And I don't know if he didn't know the finish, but, like, if I was him, I'd definitely be going on the right-hand side of the road as he is, or our left-hand side of the road, like, over here. I mean, it's so easy to say it because I'm not riding at 65k an hour, but still, like, it's absolutely bonkers that he didn't... He, he did go that way, but he looked really strong. And, you know, he's got the air, he's got the aero overshoes, he's got kept the bottles in and all the rest of it. Like, you know, he probably is going all aero for this. And I think he's got a good chance of winning a stage, 100%, especially when Ewan sacks it off home, which he will do, because he's gonna do the tour. But like, I don't know, it's it's rough for him. Um, I think he really deserves a Giro stage. He looked so good last year, um, but obviously didn't race the Giro, I'm pretty sure it crashed at some point. But yeah, uh, but if we look at the numbers here, big, big numbers from Caleb Ewan. 65 kilometers an hour for the fast, 12 seconds. So he did 1200 watt average which is huge. I think he's probably 68 maybe, maybe maybe a little bit less. He's, he's not huge. He's got the biggest calf. I've ridden with the boy, and my oh my, his calves are huge. Um, max power, 15.60. And a day like this, I Jane don't think he's gonna lose it. Like, even if even if you think he basically bumped into Merlier here, had to come round him, etc. but it was just no worries. Like, he's just got absolute pure gas. So that's it from the sprinting perspective. In terms of the Mika Lander perspective, uh, it's just not very good news for the poor man. I mean, he went around the ra went around the right hand corner and just someone ahead. I think it was Dombrowski clipped the pennant man who was like waving, saying, "Oh, you don't crash into me." Did crash into him, and then Lander goes sprawling everywhere. And um, I think they said it might be a collarbone, might be a wrist. It's not good. The boy looked good. Like, okay, his results weren't absolutely bonkers in the Basque Country as the race he did before, but I think he looked good. Like, he just. The way he was climbing, even yesterday, he looked like he was the one taking the initiative, which I really like. And I, okay, there's the last day of TT he wouldn't have done great in, but still, I think Landissimo could have had a good good day out today. So it's pretty disappointing again that Mikael Landers had more bad luck. 
Sivakov crashed into a tree, but at this point, nothing really surprised me with that boy anymore. He just is Geraint Thomas, that's Richie Poor's son. Like, just combine both of them together. Unreal talent, no doubt about it. The numbers he does are stupid, but can't ride a bike. And you can say it's unlucky, but I genuinely think, the more I've watched cycling recently, it's not unlucky, they just can't ride bikes. Like, people who are, like Nibali, just does not crash. There's a, a clip of the UAE tour, someone like chops his front wheel, he's that one foot clipped out, managed to stay up. And I just think like, Sagan literally never crashes in a bunch. And genuinely like, okay, there are some crashes that are unavoidable, but I'd say most of them, if you're a really good bike handler, you can sort of get out of. And Garen Thomas, Richard Port, and Sivakov just seem to have this thing of just crashing a lot. And I don't think it's just uh, like, you know, pure luck. Oh, they just have to be in the bad place. I think when you watched it, he got barged by someone which he probably shouldn't have let happen, probably should have tried to barge him back, but anyway, he did, and then just rode straight into a tree on the side of the road, and you're just like, mate, come on, let's concentrate. But anyway, that's the end of his Grand Tour. Um, well, there's a GC and ambitions for Civic but he's still going to be in the race, and then Lander's gone home, so it's very sad. But Caleb Ewan's won a stage, big up for him. Uh, so anyway, cheers for watching, hope you'd enjoy, whack that like button and subscription, please, and we'll see you in the next one.